feel like I'm hitting this one left. This is an interesting club so far. Hard one for me to turn over. That spin is so low. It is so much lower, right? I'm almost about to say I'm starting to enjoy hit three woods right now. Fairy woods can be a tricky club to hit for a lot of golfers, but today we're going to show maybe which one is right for you. This is the ultimate fairy wood comparison of 2022. Eight models, Thomas hitting the shots, and Trackman giving us all of the data. Golfers, if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel and like this video, and then drop a comment and tell us which of these fairy woods is your favorite. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahold with Second Swing Golf, joined by Thomas Campbell, master club fitter here at Second Swing at Minnetonka. Eight fairy woods, Thomas. This is, uh, this is that part of the bag. Golfers can maybe struggle sometimes getting, especially fairy woods and then hybrids as well, off of the turf and getting them into the air. And so we have eight fairy woods here uh, from you know all different brands that we're gonna test today. The ultimate comparison of 2022. Uh, really should be a good one here for, for golfers, maybe looking to upgrade at that part of the bag. And then in 2023, don't want to spend top dollar for something brand new. Yeah, and I can vouch for that. Fairy Woods are hard to hit. It's yeah. one of the hardest clubs for me to hit as well. Um, however, I consider this club as more of a gapping piece to your bag. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to find a club to gap out those longer distances in your, in your bag. You get your driver distance, you got your longest iron in your bag, and then you've got maybe a hybrid and a fairy wood to try and help complete your distances. Yeah, sure. So that's how I consider these clubs. Sure. So with fairy woods and you know you've been fitting you know golfers into these all year but also in terms of you know when a golfer's hitting fairy woods in the bay and you're trying to figure out which one is the best for them what numbers or what maybe are you looking at to identify that i mean we're looking at um spin so mm -hmm. there's if you have too little spin with a fairy wood it can be hard to control it might fall out of the sky let's face it when you're hitting a fairy wood you want to be able to hit the ball fairly straight you see a lot of guys on tour they'll revert back to their three wood sometimes mm -hmm. to try and make sure they hit the fairway as yeah. it's a driver so it's one of those clubs that's fairy finder it's not always about which club can go the furthest it's mm -hmm. about which club can go consistently and be easier to hit right exactly so we've got eight models here from all different brands we've got well i'll just list them off here i've got the ping g425 max We've got the Tour Edge E722. We've got the TaylorMade Stealth, the Cobra LTDX, the Callaway Rogue ST Max. We've got the Mizuno STX, the Shrixon ZX, and the Titleist TSR2. So pretty wide range there, and they're all kind of the, I guess, higher MOI models. If there's you know additional in the family, those are usually a maybe a lower spinning model that accompany these. But these are the ones that are going to fit into the wider range of golfers that kind of need that help getting the ball in the air and launching it higher and then that distance as well. Yeah, and then for today's test, um, goal would be to swing probably close to about 100 miles an hour. Um, all these golf shafts, they are different, but they are all very, very similar in the weight and stiffness. Okay. So all around about 65 grams in stiff flex. Okay. It's impossible for us to play the exact same shaft because half of them are bonded yep. and half of them don't even offer the same shaft. Yeah, yeah. Too, so. So. This is where it gets a little tricky to play that exact same chef, but this is going to be very, very comparable when you get fit for a fairy wood. Sure, sure. Well, I think we're ready for the test now, Thomas. So it's going to be, um, well, well, we'll hit four of them. We'll come back and we'll see what we've seen so far. Hit the last four, and then we'll kind of recap everything with all the data. Let's do it. That was a pretty good start, 100.9. Here you go. Maybe a little too much. A little speed there. That's good though. Get down on it. Oh my god. Maybe I should have, should have just done that last video every day. Alright. Interesting. That one turned right. That's a little less spin. It's launching a little lower. Zero feet. I was like, can I do that? Yeah. That spin is so low. It is so much lower, right? I 
I'm almost about to say I'm sounding a joy hit three woods right now. I feel like I'm hitting this one left. Yeah. Left. Cobra and low spin seems to be the theme of the day. Pretty good. Yeah, pretty consistent. Pretty good. Four clubs down, Thomas. Um, G425 Max, Tour Edge, E722, LTDX, and Stealth. Uh, you've got them in front of you. Did we notice look, feel, sound, anything to take away? Ping was a little louder. Yeah. Um, I feel like it was hitting the screen a little higher as well. That was one thing I kind of noticed. Mm -hmm. um, the Cobra, you know, was probably the smallest of them all, LTDX. And the other two were kind of in the middle. I'd say the, the 722, a little bit further, more weight pushed back. Yeah, okay. So it was kind of more Just CG a little more forgiving that way a little design, bit. you're saying? Right, a little more forgiving design. Yeah. The stealth looked pretty clean looking down to kind of right in between everything else. Okay. Yeah. Um, numbers wise, some things that stand out. Um, we, the low spin of stealth and LTDX jumps out to me. It is actually similar how or uh, funny how similar the launch angles are for all three clubs. Yep. Right in that 10 degree window. Um, also the smash factor was very similar across the board, right, very efficient strikes. But we then see how that changes when you get to the spin rate here. And then that changes how, every, I mean, the distance numbers as well. So, you know, we club speed, ball speed, smash, all pretty similar, right? I mean, you wouldn't expect a bunch of difference. The spin is where things get crazy. Stealth and LTDX down in the 2800s. Exotics, E722 towards 3500, and then even higher, G425 Max. Yeah, and I think, you know, look at the G425 Max, for example. My face to path was the most open. It was actually at 0, 0.0. The other three were sure. between negative 1, negative 1. 1.5. So that's going to influence spin a little bit. However, I don't ever think the G425 Max would be under, under 3000 in the spin. Yeah. There's just no way. It just, it, it's just that type of club was going to fly a little yeah. higher and have a little more spin. It's not purely about distance with this club. Mm -hmm. It's about control right. and you know, a little bit higher ball flight. Right. I think it's interesting to tell your average uh, curve is zero with the uh, G425 Max. Um, also, the most consistent spin rate was the G425 Max, even though it was a higher spin rate. Uh, so that's something to note. Now, it's not, I mean, all of them are really good, right? They're all pretty consistent. Yeah. Um, so, and then the Can most Can we say the word spin-sistency? Spin-sistency, you know? yeah, <laughs> that's what, uh, the new feature in ping implemented on their fairy woods and hybrids for, you know, if, and I don't think you necessarily miss hit one where that would maybe come into effect. You didn't really yeah. hit one low on the face or anything, but that's the idea there. And then uh, distance wise, stealth is the leader there. Um, and you can see as I bring up the map, uh, stealth is comfortably up there. I mean, those four or five shots are among the leaders, I think those four right there are the furthest in terms of carry distance, so. Yeah, by far, yeah, definitely the, the furthest carry distance. And then if you look at LTDX, left to right dispersion. Right. You know, a little wider, but however, north to south. Consistent. Right, very good, so very good. Very I mean, good and, and the Exotics E722 is really good as well. And then Ping, we talked about the consistency and spin, and we can see that uh, that's not a shabby oval by any means either. So, a uh, really good start here. Um, let's get to these final four here, and then we'll wrap it all up with uh, all the data. On the board. I remember when my fairway numbers used to be this right here. Basically, that was my 260 going to 80. About full out swing. Mm. That was interesting. I don't feel like I swung that fast, and I don't feel like I missed hit it that much either. But. Holy draw. Did you feel like you did that? Not really, but... That was turn. Yeah, it goes left for sure. Draw bias. This is an interesting club so far. It's a hard one for me to turn over. Compared to the one before, which was like bread and butter to get the thing to go left. Mm -hmm. Might have done it. There it is. It's going nowhere in the air though. Mm. Not too far left. 
Oh, that's perfect. All right, so Thomas, the last four clubs in your hand there, you just hit um, some interesting stuff there in those last four. So uh, did you notice anything first? Look, feel, sound, anything major there to take away? Yeah, the TSR2 and the Strix and ZX, they looked profile-wise, they kind of looked a little bit more like a player's where we looked down okay. at. Um, however, as we know, they're you know on the maybe forgiving size. I know Strix and only, they only offer one fairy wood. Yeah. And I do want to touch a little bit on the on here soon because yeah. there was one shot there that the spin rate was very low. I hit it off the heel and I was yeah. very surprised. It, it kind of affected the dispersion pattern yeah. a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but the other, other two were pretty good. The only thing I noticed with the STX yeah. is it was really easy to turn left. Yeah, it is a draw bias fairy wood. And then um, go into the ZX, yeah. Strixon. It's like, I'm not going to get this thing to go left. Yeah. yeah. So they're, they're, they're almost two completely different profiles in those sure. two clubs. Sure. So the numbers um, on the screen, I mean, obviously the, the big thing to me that I see is the spin on the ZX. And you mentioned one shot there. We can you know, probably bring that up and you know, show why that spin is so much lower. But in general, the spin on these was lower than a couple of the other ones in the previous set that we'll, we'll talk about too. Yeah, so that's what I was talking about, how the dispersion circle got a little larger. But you notice the other four were pretty good up there. Yeah. But let's just kind of talk about this impact kind of slightly off the heel. Right. To get a 1687 spin hitting down on it, that was, I was like a little surprised by that. Yeah, that and is the, not normal. Yeah, I mean, the spin rates in general were, you know, I'll cut on my little on the lower side, 2174 there. Yeah. This one, a little to the right, 1972. So yeah. I, I was, you know, it's a low spinning fairy wood. Let's yeah. just put it that way. Yeah. So that's the takeaway. That, that has to be the, the conclusion to draw there. And I mean, in general, Rogue ST Max is also pretty low spinning. Um, and then we saw, TSR2 uh, and STX jump up there closer to 3,000. But um, in general, I think we saw lower spin here compared to the previous set, which had, for example, G425 was up there. Yep. Um, the Tour Reg, I believe, was up there as well, the uh, E7022. So, well, um, let's, uh, let's add them all. And okay. then let's just see how they all kind of fit in here with regards to uh, uh, averages and everything mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, okay. interesting. We have, I mean, really, every uh, there's a lot of clubs in that 2800 range for spin. Yeah. And then there's some outliers after that, really. Look at this. Look at this ball speed. <laughs> That's I was like reading the what? same number over and over there again. I thought that was a glitch. Effort. Yeah, yeah. So you can see uh, stealth a little bit, little stealth and the the rolling ST Max a little bit faster there on yeah. the, on the ball speed. But yeah, I almost thought it was a glitch there for a second too. I was seeing. 151.6 to 151.9 yeah. on four of those. But the <laughs> takeaway there is, you know, we're talking 148 to 150 on the smash. Yeah. The launch angle, I think we might see another glitch. <laughs> yeah. Because they're all in the tens, I believe. I believe, yeah. We oh, got a couple 11. of 11.2, 11.9 with the STX. I think that's interesting with the STX because it's a very unique one. Because yeah. you'll notice that it was curving the most to the left yep. on the curve, Draw but, it was but it was launching the highest. Mm -hmm. So easy to hey, launch it did, and it does, draw. Mizuno does say the STX fairy wood is a high launching draw bias fairy wood, um, emphasizing the high launch, obviously. So nope. we got the highest launching they're and used to have there. that draw bias. They're all yep. left. So yep. um, interesting. On that, that was an interesting takeaway yep. there with, with that club. Okay. Uh, spin. So we, we talked on spin a little bit. 2200, as I mentioned, that's, that's too low. Yeah. That was, I mean, unless you're a golfer that has a lot of spin and you need spin taken off. Yeah. ZX is a good option there, but the spin rate was a little on the low side. You'll notice 2482 roll ST Max, you know, it's also kind of fairly low. I think you kind of notice general trends most of the time, you know, Callaway, TaylorMade, maybe we were talking about even like um, Cobra. You, know, you yeah. see generally the spin being a little on the lower side with all yeah. of their clubs. Yeah. Um, so we can see sub, sub 3000 there. TSR yeah. was just a little under 3000. Seems like the clubs that TaylorMade, Callaway, Cobra make for the player that might be a mid to high handicapper, you know, to play in their bags. They drop that spin a little bit lower, it feels like, just right. to get that extra distance to chase that number. And it, I mean, it, it works, and, you know, if that's what they're going for. Yeah. Yeah. Um, carry distance. This is the carry distance in total is going to be different with them all, right? Mm -hmm. Because of the, of, the, of the spin. Right. 251.1 with the stealth, 249.2 with the Rogue ST Max. That was the highest total distance. Highest went to the Rogue ST Max 277.7, Stealth 276.1, 
ZX was getting there a different way, 275.2. Yeah. yeah, interesting. So. There's a nine yard difference in carry, but it's a yard difference in total. Yeah. ZX to the stealth. And then touching on this, you know, attack angle where between, I think, negative 0.1 and negative 1.5. So very close to, you know, we're hitting down on it with yeah. the curve, which, is, which I wanted to do. So that's, that's awesome <laughs> there. And club path, we're about one degrees in the out yep. for our four of them. So yep. um, landing angle, just because of that spin, you will notice the ZX, yeah, you're getting lower. comfortably lower. And then if you go with the other spectrum, comfortably higher here yeah. with exotics E722 and yeah. G425. Is there max. a number on landing angle you're looking for out of the fairy wood? Because I guess in, for your sake, you use fairy wood primarily even off the tee. You're not really using it to go to a green. So if yeah. there is somebody that uses a fairy wood often hit the green, is there a number they should be looking for there? I, it really depends on what the golfer's looking for, whether it is off the tee or uh, hitting into the green. Um, I'd say mid. 30s yeah. is is a good kind of landing angle to kind of be at to you know up to 40 but yeah. 40 is going to give you better stopping power you can see obviously g425 max was stopping within 17 yeah. yards you know you get 30 33 degrees it's stopping within 27 28 yards yeah. yeah so a lot of it will come down to the curve you'll notice obviously g425 max zero feet of curve so it's yeah. dead straight but then you see stx you know, 42 feet of curve to the left, but everything else there was, you know, low teens yeah. essentially. On the not a lot curve. of movement for yeah. the most part, um, yeah. which is good. And I think you know players in these clubs don't need a lot of movement. They might have movement right now, and they don't want they want to reduce it. So to see that I think is a positive, um, especially on the ping having an average of zero and watching those ball flights. We talked about that dispersion already a little bit, pretty consistent. Um, but there's also some other ones up here too we should touch on. Right. Yeah, and you know. For this test, you know, I was swinging about 100 miles, just, just over 100 miles an hour, hitting down on it like one degree. You know, these aren't numbers that I'm used to seeing for a fairy for for wood, but this is to try and get closer to what the general public will right. going to see, you know, will fit into these type of clubs. Um, so this dispersion pattern, it's, it's going to be player dependent, right? Right. Yeah, so, but there's, you know, general trends. You can see carry distance is a couple. You see carrying a little bit further here. Right. Stealth stands out to me, the light blue. Yep. Consistently maybe carrying a little bit further up there. Um, is, that, is it LTDX right now is what is highlighted there? Um, pretty con yeah. you know, shallow, shallow. In terms of north to south. Yep. That's, pretty, that's a pretty good dispersion pattern there as well. And then for those people interested to know just how far the free wood kind of goes in, in general, <laughs> total distance. Yeah. You can see once again, Stealth was pretty consistent up there because the distance overall. Rogue ST Max Rogue was up, Max there, was up yep. there. Um, obviously, the STX was consistently left. Yep. We even had one over there that I missed the fairway with. Um, yeah, interesting, interesting trends. Good stuff. Uh, I think the takeaway here is it comes back to gapping. Yep. Um, what, what kind of distance you were trying to hit your particular club. Yep. Um, there's general, generally some trends, you know, spin and ball speed and height, yep. what we've kind of talked about. So pay attention to those. Um, at the end of the day, it's you know, whatever club is going to fit the best right. gap in the player's bag. Yeah, and that will, you know, and also the, the player, if they're looking to gain or reduce spin, you know, hit it higher, hit it lower, that a lot of those questions can be answered with some of the data we have today from this test because we saw a couple of the clubs, a lot lower ball flight. For example, ping and tour edge were a little bit higher, more spin, and the player that might need more of that can honestly get that with one of those models. So a lot of good stuff here, Thomas. Um, and again, like we mentioned before, some of these comparisons we're doing, these models um, are all available in 2022, but moving into 2023, there's gonna be some new stuff out there at a higher price point, cheaper price point for these now, if you're interested at, in something that delivers really good performance, uh, but maybe not at quite the price tag you, you will see for some of the new stuff. So go to secondswing.com or a second swing store, talk with one of our experts and get fit for a fairy wood. Thomas mentioned the gapping piece, the spin, the launch, the ball speed, uh, the toll and carry distance, it all matters. Make sure you're dialed in and playing better golf. So Thomas, thank you for all the, the shots and the data. Um, really good stuff. I think the viewers will like this one. Yep, not a problem.